welcome to this latest Enfield Voices community interview. I'm Katie Davis and I'm here today with Gary. He's going to be telling me a bit about his life in Enfield and how he first got interested in its local history. So first of all, thank you for coming, Gary. You're welcome. Um, so how long have you lived in Enfield? All my life. All your life? Okay. All my life. And what is it that's made you stay here so long? Uh, there's a couple of things. Basically, um, I owned a shop in Edmonton for a number of years. Uh, not long after I was married, so that and that was in Lower Edmonton, so that kept us in the area. Um, then in '87, one of our sons was born with special needs, um, and he goes to St Mark's Autistic Daycare Centre, which has won the number one autistic centre in the country award so many times. We didn't want to take him away from it. So, and if we move out of the borough to a degree, he can't go there no more. Sure. Um, so that's why we've stayed in the borough. Okay, and what is it that particularly got you interested in the local history of the borough? Um, it started back in early 90s, basically. Uh, I do genealogy, uh, family trees, I've done my family tree. I wanted to do some about my mum's family. I used to be the potman and pot lady for the Plough pub. Oh, really? Uh, in Enfield High. And there was nothing. Um, went to the local history unit with Graham Daly. Um, David Pan was there on that particular day as well. Um, and Graham challenged me he said nobody had done any local history on the pubs about 30 people had started and not one had finished and he said that if I stuck to it for a year at least he would then he wouldn't help me until the year was up <laughs> so once a year was up by that time I'd got well into it I combined the genealogy um, of the licensees to get more information about the pub books it just took off um, I had to release a book before the pub books which is where my forgotten street on Connor's End comes into yep. it. Um, then it just evolved. Then I got asked by the Enfield Gazette newspaper to do a column for them, which I'd done for about four years, I think. They then asked me to write a book on the history of them, which I did, which involves this place, uh, because the owner of this at the time, uh, Mr. Bowles, or Lord Bowles, no, Sir Bowles, um, he owned the Gazette newspaper, so I'd done a bit about him as well. And so just going back to the booklet, some people might not have seen your books or the things that you've actually published before. They're hard to get hold of now. <laughs> so where, where can people still get hold of them? Um, well, we've got a charity eBay shop. Um, two of them, three of them, I think, are still on there. But my pub books, part one and part two, are out of print. You, they're charging silly money for them I'm on the, one of the sites, £75, I think, for a, for a £9 book. Um, I don't know any other places now where you can get them from. Well, see, I think going back, I remember them being in Enfield Libraries, so I used to work in Enfield Libraries. They used to sell them for me. And I just yeah. wonder if they've still got copies there. Not that I know of. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm down the main one in Enfield Town a lot, and I haven't seen, I've seen my books that are that they've got um, for reference purposes, but I don't think they've got any more because they sold them all off. They don't yeah. cheap. They they cleared out a lot of their books before. Now they've got a shop where they can sell them in the Dugdale Centre. Yeah. Um, I think Paul Everett's a little bit annoyed now that they had to sell. But what can you do? No, most of them are out of print. I think three of them, four of them. I also got asked to do the history of the uh, North Mid Hospital. Those ones are still available. There's a few of those. Not again. Not many of those are around. Yeah, so they've been very popular. Have you had any thoughts about publishing any further material? It, for, on my eBay um, and Facebook sites, I'll probably print up some booklets rather than books. It's just not worth it now. And not only that, the shops in Enfield that used to take out books, because I'm a private author, as yeah. they call me, um, they won't take anything off me. You've got to be one of the big boys now. So whereas before I could sell them in the libraries, I sold them in my pub books, all the pubs took them and sold them for me. They can't do that no more. So the, the, for me, it would be printing them up in booklet form sure. and then selling them on like, through my sites that I've got. Yeah, It's a shame because I think they'd be really popular actually because lots of people really obviously like the Facebook side of things but lots of people like yeah. these things to keep for posterity. Especially well a lot of them are getting onto me. They know that I've got about another 11 books in various forms of completion yeah. and they do keep onto me, you know, put them out and put them out. But I mean I've written the complete history of Ponder's End um, which I did with Graham Dallin. Um, but at the moment it's about four inches thick and there's not even any pictures in it 
so it's got to be condensed right down into certain areas. Okay. Uh, and so out of all the areas that you have researched, which one personally have you found the most interesting or maybe the most surprising? I but I done the, when I done the pub books that that was um I th can't remember now seven eight year project. My wife had to drive me around to every single pub. <laughs> That's a um, hardship, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I made sure that I had a half, at least a half of a, whatever it was available at the time <laughs> in each one of them, so I could talk to the landlords. But it, it took us a long while, and not only that, I also went to the the cemeteries, Lavender Hill Cemetery and Enfield Harvey Cemeteries, and I literally went round looking at every headstone for the licensees and things like that. But I mean. If you wanted a place of personal that I go to, it is Lavender Hill Cemetery. A bit weird, but not for me because I've got my, one of my sons is buried there. Oh, I'm sorry. To but uh, it's just such a relaxing place that I love sitting over there anyway. So. Um, so you told us that you actually grew up in Everfield. Tell me a little bit more about what life was like then. It was more calmer from what I can remember. I mean, I used to go fishing down Enfield Lock. We used to go over the rolling mills and make all little tents out of all the wrapped paper and all that. Then there was the big fire and it burnt it all down. But the connections in Enfield for me, I mean, my family, my mum's family came from up from Wales in the 30s. My granddad helped build the Cambridge Road. Um, he also built a lot of the house, or was a builder on the Willow Estate, oh, built well. a lot of those uh, with his brothers that had also come up. Yeah. Um, my mum was the only one actually born in England or in Enfield. Um, her and her sisters worked at Bellins. Uh, my dad was a local postman in Wolfham Cross after coming out of the Navy. Um, used to deliver letters to Cliff Richard <laughs> and his sister. That was fascinating. Um, not in Enfield, I know, but he, he then went to Ferguson's as security guard. I, when I left school, went to Stonehills the big furniture company in Edmonton. All right. He then joined me there a few years later. My, my family were all over the place. My sister worked in Spears Games. Oh, yeah. My cool. brother um, is a local builder and he's converted a few pubs. He's converted the, the player and, um, well, name's gone out of me, down Green Street, the, the one that got converted down there. Um, so, all in all, we've been in Enfield for a long time. I've seen all the changes. When I got my shop, that was in Lower Edmonton. So, in the, the late 70s, after I got married, we moved into Lower Edmonton. Um, it, it might sound weird, but that was a bit of a culture shock because it was totally different from yeah. the countryside of Enfield moving there. Um, but you get used to it. I mean, after Edmonton, I'm there in Palmer's Green. Yeah. I, I just love the area. I mean, I love the place, Enfield. I, I know it gets knocked a lot, but rose tinted eyes, I don't know what the word yeah. is, you know what there, I mean? There's always problems, I think, in every generation, but it's easy to look back and think things are getting worse, when actually there's probably are positives. In fact, what would you say you think some of the positives are in terms of the change that you've seen in Enfield or the borough as a whole? Now you've got me. <laughs> I, I don't know, I mean, like I said, I mean, I, I might be looking at, I go out a lot um, to different places doing the, the research that I do. Um, I don't know. I, on, I honestly couldn't tell you. I don't know what the, you know, the positives, mm, that's not my game. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe the answer is that actually it's not better or worse, it's just different. <laughs> it is different, yeah. I mean, it, the way of life's different. I mean, when I was growing up, I mean, I grew up in a little square of like 20 houses. Everyone left their front doors open. You know, yeah. you can't do that now. But it's, I mean, where I live now, there's only 10 of us. Right, in, in a little cul-de-sac. Um, we all know each other, everybody you know, talks with what neighbours we know. Yeah, I go to where one of my family lives and they know their next door neighbour either side and that's it. Yeah. Whereas a lot of them, my friends in Enfield, they can still, they know their neighbours, they still talk to yeah. them. And the stories that come from the older residents are fascinating. Yeah. So, I think there is more of a sense of community sometimes than people actually realise. And for me, that's certainly come through when I've been a member of Enfield Voices and some of these other large Enfield groups. And although maybe the way people are interacting is different, obviously we've got social media and we'll come on to that in a moment. But I think it proves that people do still have that want for community, but maybe we're just all engaging in a slightly different way. Yeah, I, I mean, everybody, and I've said it before, can look for rose tinted you know, glasses and, and see things for what they were. I mean, the way that I remember Enfield, 
you mentioned about the groups. I mean, on my groups, we have people that say, Enfield was never like that. And when I ask them how old they are, they'll say, well, I'm 25. Yeah. But this thing happened like 30 years ago. Yeah. So, or they'll say like, I never remember that being there. Well, of course they don't, because it yeah. changed. So it's where the boroughs evolving and changing and, you know, roads change, road gets cut in half and yeah. things like that. So yeah, what you can remember now and in 10 years time, it will be different again. Yeah. But, so the main reason we're here is really, I'm interviewing you for Enfield Voices, but there's obviously a large number of Enfield groups and you're involved with a number of them. Perhaps you could just tell us which ones you're currently involved with. In Enfield ones, obviously my own one, Enfield Past and Present in Photos, um, I help Debbie Dean uh, as an admin on the Edmonton's Past group, um, and also Richard Starling owns and runs a group, uh, Palmer's Green and Southgate uh, Memories, and I do a load of pictures on there. Apart from those, I do other groups, about six in total, but they're outside of Enfield, yeah. so they're, sure. they're separate. So it's definitely the past and present in photos that probably most of us are aware of. And I love looking at all the old black and white photos and Good. seeing how Enfield looked back in the day. And where do you actually source most of the material of that from? I actually work in conjunction with Enfield Council's local history unit, um, mainly with John who works there. Um, for ooh, about three years now, I've been digitising all their photos for oh, them. Oh, okay. Um, it started off I was just doing the glass negatives for them because I've got the, the professional glass negative scanner so I was doing those for them then we found a load of other negatives from newspapers that had since closed down so I'd done them then it's just evolved and I think I've done something like 70,000 to date wow and I, it's the tip of the iceberg there's, I was going to say how many lot, are there in total do you have any idea no I mean, I've only done, like I said, the negatives, the newspapers. I'm currently doing their photo collection, which is when people go in and, and ask if there's a particular road and John will get the folders out. Yeah. I'm doing those, but that's not taking so long because I've already done a lot of the negatives for them. Yeah. But there's uh, four filing cabinets full, I think. I've done, wow, okay. And I've done one and a half of them so far. And that's without all the other collections. Sure. That there, there's, I think John's mucked around the other day and said I've got about another four years work. <laughs> so, there's a lot. Oh, well, we're all there's very excited to see more of those. Are there any photos that have particularly stood out for you? I mean, all of them are, are fascinating, but is there anything that you've seen that you've been surprised by, perhaps, in the archives? On a personal note, I was surprised because when I've done the, um, the research for the pub books, uh, we, or Graham at the time, tried to source as many photos for me as possible. Yeah. Um, and there was a number of pubs where we couldn't find a, a single picture for. We've now found them. As, oh, I've, been really? as I've been going through um, the collection, the negatives, um, not just in Enfield, but the Edmonton ones, some Southgate ones, the, the pubs have popped up. Uh, and I think I could probably do another book on the, yeah. the missing pictures from the books, so to speak. But um, there's been some that have surfaced of old Enfield town that we didn't realise were there. Um, Eastern Enfield, there's some old farmhouses that have popped up. Okay. Uh, there's been some real good pictures that have popped up, and I've got an agreement. I don't, I mean, I can copy 50 pictures, but yeah. I only ever put one up. Yeah, sure. Then, if people do want any more of those pictures, yeah. then they get in touch with the local history yeah. unit. Um, for a, a minimal sum, John will sell them a good yeah. quality of the picture. So that was the idea behind it. Not only just helping them with their picture collection, but putting it out there so that if people did want them, yeah, which is why you will see the the watermark ELSLA is the copyright see, yeah. mark, and then we put the watermark through them. That again was one of the agreements that we done with them. And if people are particularly interested in seeing a photo, maybe the area they live or they have reason to believe there is a photo in the archives, can people contact the local history? Oh, we get it all the, it no, they get in touch with me. Okay. <laughs> we get them all the time. You know, um, I live in such and such a road. Is there any pictures of yeah. them? Um, and I try to source it, but nine times out of ten, if I can't source it, yeah. and they've put it on the group, other people have. 
Yeah. Uh, which happens a lot. Yeah. Well, there's only about 13,000 members. I checked in Enfield. 13,326, I think. There it was you go. Sorry. You know the exact number. Yeah, I had yeah. a quick look. But that's, that's really impressive. And I think that's testament to just how interesting a group it is and the kind of source material that you have. Mm. Um, there's also probably challenges, I suspect, in moderating a group of that size. And certainly really? we've experienced some of those on Enfield Voices. Perhaps you'd just like to talk a little bit about that. We try to keep it, I mean obviously there's other admin apart from myself um, that came over with me from my old crew um, and we've got a, a lovely moderator Richard Price who you've probably yeah. seen on there who started colourising He's um, he's taken to colourising pictures. Yes, that I've were, seen that. Uh, have you seen them? Yeah, I have. They're really good. I yeah, like it. Yeah. yeah, the old black and white ones and yeah. Richard's colouring them and they're now going on so um, he's helping out and again the libraries are you know they think it's fascinating yeah. that they do that but the challenges we have is political racial you yeah. know the racist thing um i'll give you an example of the um should we say the racist element if you like um i put a picture up of um some chimney sweeps mm. and it was um, a race 1910 and they were dressed up as the chimney sweeps now yeah. a lot of people don't know what a chimney sweep is yes which surprised me. I, I didn't realise until after I put the picture up. I had so many people. So they've watched Mary Poppins. How do people not know? <laughs> I know, I know. But um, and obviously, chimney sweeps are black. Of course, yeah. Yeah, and I, we had a very. I had to take the picture down in the end because it, it just got too bad. Yeah. Where people were accusing me of um, putting these pictures up of white people dressing up as black no. people. <laughs> And it wasn't. Uh, they were genuine yeah. chimney sweeps, and that. But because people didn't know what didn't chimney understand. sweeps were, they didn't understand. And it's like, why are you putting yeah. these pictures up? And it's a shame, really, because that was really an education opportunity for people to take that on board. But it's very difficult to get people to actually read the comments or read the pictures or the true context of the post. Well, the lady whose picture it was. Yeah that I'd put up, her dad and I think her uncle were actually in the picture yeah. and obviously she got upset that yeah. people were doing it. Um, I tend to stay away from political parties as well because yeah. we don't, we try to keep it non-political. Yeah. Um, Understandably given what goes on in Anfield Voices Well sometimes. yeah, I mean I've actually got a very very large collection of um, Margaret Thatcher, probably about 2,000 photographs and all yeah. that but I, I won't put them up because I know straight away what would happen, yeah. which is why um, when Francis asked me, uh, oh, ages ago now, would, would I put some pictures up on there? And I said, well, I've got pictures that I can't put up on my group and I'll put them up on yeah. there. Um, as you probably know, I tried the other day by putting yeah. a, an Enfield Council 1922 picture up, which in the end it had to get pulled because it, it yeah. just went the wrong way. Yeah, and, and it's so, sad really, because the historical element's really interesting. Um, and it's disappointing, I suppose, that people can't see it for what it was, or even using it, like I say, from an educational, because even things that you see in photos that maybe aren't right mm -hmm. today, um, it's the same people can't still accept that it's good that we've moved on that far. That should be the message perhaps we're taking from it, that perhaps it's good that times have moved on in some ways. Yeah. But, but it's a shame that people have to be negative about things as it, as, as it was. The obviously. age element comes into it as well. Yeah. Um, as I was talking to you before, um, people don't realise, let's say Turkey Street, that Turkey Street went from there to there, but the Cambridge Road in the 30s cut it in half. Yeah. And a lot of people don't realise there's another half of Turkey Street or another half of Ho Lane or something like that. Yeah. They don't realise and they, we get it on there. That was never like that, but it was, yeah. but before you was born. Yeah, of course, and, and we yeah. get that a lot. That, no, that, that's wrong, that never happened, or that was never there. And, well, <laughs> As if you're doctoring the photo <laughs> somehow. <laughs> well, yeah, which we don't ever do. No, no, of course. Well, apart from Richard when he coloured yeah. it. But, I mean, no, I mean, we, we don't do nothing. And uh, so, ageism, if that's the right word, that can come into it because, again, when you put a picture up from the 1920s, 30s, 40s, yeah. if their people are not born until the 1970s, then of course they wouldn't no, know. No, they wouldn't know. So, but no, we, we try to keep it smooth, and I must admit, um, since we changed groups, I think three years now, four years now, yeah. um, this one has run a lot smoother. We don't have to do much intervention. 
we haven't had to delete many people or remove people yeah. um, from the group at all. Well, that 13,000, you know, that, 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 that's pretty good actually if there's only sort of isolated incidents really. It is. Yeah, 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 we get very few now that come on, and if it does, nine times out of ten, it's a misunderstanding. Yeah, you know, yeah. But, um, but that, that, that's great, and I'm sure that's testament to uh, the tone of your posts and also the moderation that goes on in that group. Well, we, t I mean, personally, I, I tend to put a post up, not all the time, but a lot of the time. I'll just put a post and a picture up, and I leave it, and I leave it to all the other members to go on it. Um, there's a great one going on at the moment about the pill boxes. Oh, I, I saw it, but I haven't read all of the comments. Yeah, somebody put a picture up of the pill box they photographed in the area, um, and then it, it got into a, a bit of a debate about whether pill boxes were concrete or brick bill. Um, and at the end of my dad's garden, where I was born, a pill box is still there. And I, I played in it as a, as a kid, but it's the thread is just getting longer and longer yeah. and more, more and more people are getting involved in it. and if you read it people are actually saying this is great i'm learning things that i didn't know before yeah, that's but that's great. where we've just left it to go on yeah. its own a few people are again not moaning but are saying why are we allowing um debate if you like to go yeah. on it it's supposed to be enfield past and present in photos yeah well like i mentioned earlier quickly before I was in another group about Enfield yeah. and that's all they wanted was pictures people started talking about it that they would get deleted off of it yeah. and by doing it the way we've done it now we've got so many old families of, course, of yeah. Enfield coming through saying that was my dad's shop yeah. that was my nan's shop you know um, I was born in that room above that shop and by allowing these to flow a little bit more yeah the natural history that's coming out I think that's really nice because actually that's like adding to the social history. If you just have the photo, you don't. Although obviously you post with some information about it, mm. it it's kind of almost bringing it to life by having people add things to it or say, like you yeah. say, that's my dad's shop or I used to live there, and it's kind of bringing it all together, really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've actually had a picture of my own shop in Lower Edmonton that went up, and, and people would say they were arguing that it wasn't my shop, and I'm going, well, it's well, got my name you. above yeah. it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that was my shop. Yeah, yeah so. No, it, it does. It, it, it creates debate, it creates talking in a nice way. Not like some of the ones yeah, on Enfield Voices where they can go really off tangent yeah. and things like that. We try to keep the politics out of it. Uh, we try to keep it running smooth and hopefully it's working. Yeah. So, so why do you think that local history is still important? Some people might say, oh, that all happened years ago. Why does it even matter? What was it for you that you think makes local history important? I don't know that it's important, but I think it's important to know where you come from, which is where yeah. my genealogical, not training, but where, where I've done it for like 15 years, I want, personally, I wanted to know everything, where my family came from, where they were, with a name like Boudier, you know, I, I knew it was French. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> three of us got together, we managed to trace that right back to 1100, over in France. My mum's family, the Locks, we traced it back to Wales, then I was surprised to find they'd actually come from Bristol. Oh right, yeah. You know, so I'm actually involved in Bristol uh, sure. history and pictures and photographs. You know, that's one of my other groups oh, okay. and all that. But that's for my family. And yeah. I found on our group a lot of families, some of them are like six, seven, eight generations wow, yeah. in the same place. And that and they've grown up with it. So I don't know. It, I think it's not important to people, but they like to know Yeah. and all that. I mean, people say to me now, because I wrote the pub books, um, every time a pub goes down, oh, you must be gutted. I, I'm not gutted that the pub's gone, but yeah. I like it if the building stays. Of course, yeah. Yeah, the Green Dragon, for instance, you yeah. know, I've got a lot of stuff about that. Well, I, I, you know, personally, the Green Dragon was going to go, yeah. uh, but I'm glad they didn't knock the building down. Yeah. Because, you know, some of the buildings I do like. The, yeah. the Cock Tavern in uh, the Cock, not the Cock Tavern in um, in Edmonton. You know, it is now a Turkish restaurant. Sure. And what I, they, I think they've done with it is brilliant. Okay. The building's still there. Yeah. Even though it nearly got demolished by a bomb, it it survived that and yeah. it survived the developers. So. Yeah. What's your favourite iconic building in Enfield? Would you say? Ah, oh, I haven't got one. I mean, we're sitting outside one of the best ones I think, <laughs> for we all. I mean, I do love it here. Um, I mean, a lot of people don't realise, um, well one of the books I wrote on Edmonton, the hospital, yeah. 
Um, when that came about, uh, the Guardians or whatever they call now, uh, they asked me to write the book, which I did. And Prince Charles actually got in touch with them and said, could we please have seven copies of Mr. Boudier's book oh, wow, signed? Oh, amazing. Uh, because it turned out that he was the head yeah. of the, the King's Trust. Yeah. So he, he wanted the book. Um, so, and I hadn't finished it at the time, so yeah. I, I delved a little bit for Ray, he's the King's Trust, he's, he's the chairman or whatever he was at the time. Um, I thought I'd write a little bit about him because this when he was getting married yeah. to Camilla. Oh. And when you trace it back, Camilla Parker Bowles. So there's actually a page in the book that tells you about how Camilla yeah. uh, married the Bowles. Yeah. And it was um, the, the grandson of the current Bowles who had the name interlinked to Parker Bowles. Yeah. And that's where the name Parker Bowles come from. And oh, it all started yeah. here. Well, there you are. Fascinating. It was one of those fascinating little stories that we found, you know. And I only done that because, you know, Prince Charles was the head of this, otherwise I wouldn't have even bothered with that thing. But <laughs> well, that's really interesting. But no, I do I do like this building. There's a few others that I like to go to and see, but this one I like walking around it and it's big. My, I mean obviously nearest to me I've got um Broomfield Park. Yeah. Yeah, shame about the house. Uh, well, what do you think should happen to the house? That's an interesting topic. That uh, I'm not the one to ask for that. Colin Younger is the one to ask for that. Um, you know, um, I thought it was going to be a good idea when it was going to be turned into a pub, but I agreed that they wouldn't let it go ahead because they wanted to demolish the main gateway yeah. just to get a truck through. I don't think that was a good no. enough reason to demolish that. Um, they could have stopped the lorry outside and wheeled the beer inside and things yeah. like that, you know didn't have to get the, through that. Yeah. Um, it's a shame, it really is. Um, I mean, I was involved with the exhibition, not in a fantastic way, but the one that's on at the Dugdale Centre yeah. at the moment, the Broomfield House, um, which Stacey put together. I helped them a little bit with that. Yeah. Uh, Colin Younger, who is the chairman of the Broomfield people, so I, I'm with him all the time. It, it, it's nice, you know, yeah. that somebody is yeah. trying to do something about it. And you've actually got excavations yeah. going on there. Yeah. Is it this month? I think. They're doing like a time team oh, okay. thing in there. Oh, it'll be interesting to see what that turns up. Perhaps that's another future topic for an Enfield Voices <laughs> interview. So that draws another one of our Enfield Voices community interviews to a close. We'd obviously like to extend our thanks to Gary for the interview today, to Liz, our camerawoman, and we just encourage all of you to join Enfield Photos past and present. Um, there's some really fascinating material on there um, and we hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.